There's little good news today for residents in flood zones spanning three different provinces. Thousands have now had to leave their homes. All there is to do is wait for floodwaters to recede so they can get back in and take some stock of the damage. But for many people, that is still days away. Now, much of the focus is on the areas surrounding Ottawa and Montreal, where the number of people affected has risen sharply. In Quebec, more than 5,500 homes have been damaged by the flooding. Access to more than 3,000 has been cut off, and almost 8,000 people have been forced to leave. The Premier is telling displaced residents to have courage in the difficult days ahead. Well, thousands of people are also on the move just outside of Montreal. A dike burst last night and that flooded the community of St. Mount sur le Lac. In fact, provincial police have now moved in to assist with the evacuation. Our Jay Turnbull is on site. So, Jay, hello to you. I could see the waters rising around you. What is the latest right now? Uh, well, this, uh, Michael, was not like this at all about. 24 hours ago. Last night around 7 o'clock, uh, the dike, which is about a kilometer and a half uh, away from here, the lake is at least, it burst. Uh, and then all the water came rushing, gushing down here and filled several homes. When I say several, I'm talking about several hundred. They're talking about maybe even uh, 2,500 homes which are affected by water. Uh, so far, maybe as many as 6,000 people had to be evacuated last night from their homes. Uh, it was really quite an emergency operation. Uh, uh, firefighters and police had to actually dive into the water to pull people out of their homes uh, they were, you know this I'm in a mobile uh, home park here uh, people had to, were of course they're elderly they are somewhere uh, are disabled in wheelchairs so they had to actually help those people out of the water uh, you can see here people are actually going to their homes uh, using boats to gather whatever they can because the water came up so fast they had no time to react they had five maybe ten minutes some people left their supper on the table they left a glass of wine sitting there they left their pets in their homes so they really had no time at all to react I spoke with one woman earlier today uh, let's have a listen to what she had to say Somebody knocked on the door, they were a panic moment because they were saying that the dike had just broken so they needed help. So we ran to see the place and within seconds, minutes, you could hear the trees crashing, the water tumbling down like a real tsunami. It, it just came and then the police took their sirens out and they said, okay, go, 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 because evacuate, evacuate. So we ran around the places and took the old peoples out of their house and we went to the city the city hall and next thing you know, we were evacuated from there also because the water was coming up to the city hall. So it was, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it was really was came really, really quickly and we're talking about close to 40 streets uh, which are have water on them just like this now so what they're doing now is they're trying to build uh, a couple of dikes one about five streets that way one a couple of streets this way so to try to sort of protect it but for the, for the time being they can't put the water anywhere they can't pump it back into the lake because the lake is is full so they're just now it's a it's a waiting game uh, that people here could be out of their homes they're saying weeks maybe even months michael Jay, thank you for that update. The CBC's Jay Turnbull in St. Mount sur le Lac, which is just outside of Montreal. Well, in times of tragedy, often communities come together, and that is exactly what we're seeing in Montreal. In fact, Scott Binns is a volunteer with the West Island Flood Volunteers. It is a crowdsourced group that's been born out of the floodings in 2017. He joins us right now. So, Scott, thank you for joining us today. I know that you're speaking to us on your phone because you are right now out there helping people best you can. Uh, give us a sense of what you're seeing as you make your way around the neighborhood. Uh, it, the conditions are not great. Uh, I think as everyone knows, uh, the water continues uh, to rise. Uh, the army is out in certain places. Uh, on Gwen, near Cap Saint Jacques. I'm currently on Lausanne Street in Pierrefonds. And uh, it really is, uh, it, it's tough to see. The residents have been working tirelessly alongside great volunteers with trucks coming in, uh, sand, people delivering food and water. Uh, you see schools, you see uh, the North Shore Football League Lions or the Dollar Days or Mohawk Hockey Association, Association all sending out their teams uh, to help. Uh, it's just unbelievable. You know, even people taking pictures uh, help to, to, to paint the story so more people could come out. Uh, there's about 4,000 people on the group right now, and to be honest, it's not enough. We, well, we need to help the community. Let, let, we're going to pick up on that point in a second, Scott, but I'm going to ask you, can you just turn your phone around for us so people can see uh, what you're describing on the ground around you, if you don't mind turning it around? Yeah, sure, sure. So as you turn it around, maybe you could speak a little bit louder and just describe what we're looking at in this shot. 
So on day one, uh, as the flood came, uh, this street, Lausanne in Pierrefonds, uh, at 6 a.m., it was bone dry. By 10 a.m., it was halfway up the street. And I'm at the end of the street right now. The only access to the street is if you're wearing waders. Um, because so that's, that's here, how high see, the water is. That's how high the water is. And if these guys keep going, you'll see. Guys, if you keep going, you'll see it's, it's going to go up to neck level. And to be honest, uh, because of the volunteers, even the house at the end of the street uh, is actually protected right now, but they need continuous efforts to keep that going. So talk to us about the work that you are doing. Again, you're amongst a group of volunteers. What exactly are you doing to try to help people out and save their properties and their belongings? So right now on the West Island Flood, Flood Volunteers Group, it's really a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer crowdsourcing network. Nobody owns it but the people come together and they work together. So if people go to that site, they direct each other. So the people who need help put it on there and the people who can help pick it up and go to those places. And they'll go to either Il Bazaar or Pierrefond. They'll pick up bags. There's truck people with trucks who volunteer. They use their trucks to go through the water and transport the bags. There's people out there uh, bringing food to help the volunteers so they have the energy to continue uh, with this effort. It's a great ecosystem of volunteers. Mm -hmm. It's very impressive to see the community do this. Scott, you know, uh, you're there on the ground. I I'm assuming that you've been able to speak with some residents. How are they affected by all this? What are they telling you? Uh, it's very emotional. Uh, you know, first it's seeing the water, then they see their homes. Uh, a lot of people don't have insurance, so that's tough. Uh, they're tired. Um, they're extremely tired. Some people are going at this for uh, eight days straight now. Uh, I've seen certain places, even small businesses, you know, it's not even the homes uh, where people sleeping in cars and watching the properties and making sure their pumps are put out properly to continue to pump out the water. Um, yeah, it's very tough. It's very tough to see people uh, go through this. Well, you know, just hearing the description, it's heartbreaking. As you say, you need more volunteers. How do people get in contact with your group if they want to help out? Uh, just go to West Island Flood Volunteers Facebook group and you'll be let in and you go in and you could say, well, what can I do? I, I have a truck or I, I got hands. You know what? Bring the family. Uh, the kids could come and they could go pack bags in Old Bazaar or uh, in Pierrefonds. And you say you have 4,000, but you need more. We need more. It's not at 4,000. You know what? I should under say it. <laughs> uh, let's go with 3,500. Let's hit 4,000 quickly. Scott, listen, I applaud the work that you and the volunteers are doing on the ground. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. Oh, pleasure. Thank you for covering this.